Hello, welcome. It's Miss Darling in the studio. And today I thought we'd have some fun. And we're going to work with some old, very old vintage book pages and turn them into very lovely ephemera for junk journals. And here's one that I've done already. And it's very simple. And it was just all made from a vintage book paper and then I have colored it with oxide inks and done some stamping and sewing and and uh, yeah a lot of fun and here's another one this is in a warmer palette and some stamping and you can see you know just how colorful and unique and different there's no two ever alike ever and um, you know that's the way I like it is just something totally original one of a kind and so those are some great little very flat just won't have any bulk in them at all in your journals and yet you can put some really nice ephemera inside you know to surprise the recipient and then if we have time, uh, we'll try to make a couple of these. These are three pocket, one pocket, two pockets, three pockets. You got three pockets here in a single corner overall pocket so that you could tuck lots of different ephemera in each of the pockets and, you know, just beef up and create all kinds of surprises and extra interest in your journal. So we have one for, say, a right-hand page and one for a left-hand page. And just really fun to make, very easy. And so we'll maybe do a couple of those if we have time. But today I'm going to concentrate on the envelopes. And so here is some of the vintage book paper that I used. I'm, I'm going to slice off the end of this. Only about there is good. Okay, so here we have several pages, and we're just going to randomly throw some colors onto the jelly plate and have the fun of seeing what develops. So I kind of fell in love with the coloring of this one, and I hope I've picked out the same inks, but I'm not sure. I may have had, this looks like I had a, a, maybe vintage, maybe vintage photo in the spray. And of course, I'm not sure where I put my little sprayer so we'll try and take from here that's walnut I think that would be too dark vintage photo I'm going to shake this up real well Really wants to just grab a hold right there. <laughs> Boy, that was weird. All right, so I'm going to start with a little bit of dried marigold. Just, you know, put some randomly on there and some shabby shutters. This is kind of a muted green. I don't know if I'm even going to come close to what I had before. 
but that doesn't matter. I think maybe I'll spray that on afterwards. Okay, so all we got to do is sprinkle a little water on here to activate the ink. And we're going to stick this book page down. Oop. Oh dear. This paper is so delicate. Maybe this wasn't the best choice. And I'm not sure if it's the same paper I used before or not. Well, it didn't do me any good at all. That's just all like one, one color. Well, I'm just going to spray some of this on. And kind of move some of it around. Ugh. I think I'm going to have to pause the video and go find another type of paper. This is just way, way, way too fragile. It's from the 1800s and I should have known better, but I didn't. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I was right. This is the paper that I had used. This is from a you know, a more modern, recent book, and I went ahead and trimmed off all of the four edges down to where the text is, and that's what we're going to work with. Okay, so back here, all right, I want, now I want the green. I'm thinking maybe the dried marigold was a little too close in tone to the green, and that's why... That's why I got more of a solid looking color, even though it was on the vintage book paper. So I'm going to try. I think this is a little brighter. Do I want brighter or just maybe darker, rusty hinge? <laughs> what do you think, gang? You know what? I think I'm going to maybe try all three. And we'll see what we get. So, I'm just going to kind of randomly dot. This will be what we call in the art world overlapping squares which is a design technique. All right, so now we're just going to add water. And this time we'll use a modern piece of paper. And drop that in there. Okay, yeah, but that got awfully strong and and bright on us. I don't uh, really like that, so we'll try and tone it down a little bit with this uh, vintage photo. Yeah. 
Looks a little better. But I totally lost all of the green in that. So. <laughs> okay. Well. I have no idea what I did in the past. So this time, I think I'm just going to, you know, put even more green on there. Maybe won't do any more uh, of the other two colors because they're so strong and really overpower the green. So let's see what we get on this try. That's more muted, but it also is very, almost like one color. Uh, okay. So let me get out another spray. Let's see what I have in here. Peeled paint. I have some peeled paint. This is a muted green. Let's try a little of this. Hmm. Okay. That's getting me where I want to go. And I'll throw a little more uh, vintage photo there. Not too much. Okay, good. Let's get me more into the palette I wanted to get to. All right, I have one more sheet here, and I think I'm just going to stay in this color palette so that I have more than one piece for a journal. I like to, as you probably know, if you've been me with me for a while, you know that I like doing things as companions when you put companions in a journal it just adds some unity and comes across more as you know some real thought went into it it's not just a random piece that's thrown in there as an afterthought you have at least two of a similar you know same palette and similar yet different and uh, so it has a much more planned effect. Okay, for this, I'm going to try kind of doing a little squigglies in here and see what happens. I may hate it. And I may love it. Okay. They're very green, very monochromatic. All right. So, let's try a little... I'm going to beef up the green and get some contrast.
Just do a little finger painting here. And we'll throw in some more vintage photo. All right. We like. All right, so now we got to let this dry, and I think I'll hurry that up a little bit. Okay, we're all dry now, and I'm going to try to do a little splattering with some white gesso. And the uh, reason I like gesso, I was going to do black, but I discovered it all dried out on me, so I had to throw it all away. And so I have this white gesso, which is fine because I'm going to be stamping in black, and so this way we'll have some good contrast and we'll see how this brush does I have a brush that was made just for splattering I bought forgot I had it, discovered last night that I had put it somewhere I have no idea where and so I'm having to just you know grab something and uh, you know it's done a pretty good job got some pretty big spots there though so I think I'm gonna try and dab those out Whoa. I'm just gonna smush that around you know let it be just some sort of you know, lighter area on the paper. The other colors they're going to show through. I don't like the big gobs. So we'll go with that. And so. See what we do with this one.
And then our third sheet. I'm making quite a mess here, aren't I? Okay, well, so be it. When you get a little more aggressive, you'll probably get some streaking. That's okay. I'm okay with streaking. All right. So I got to go clean up and uh, I'm not going to be able to save that. Maybe I have something else I can do. So. I'm going to put this on hold and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all dry now and you can see how they look and I'm quite happy with them, like the color palette. So now we're going to fold it into the envelope that we're going to be making. So what you want to do first is turn your page where the writing is upside down to you and then flip it over and now of course the writing is right side to you and we're going to fold over approximately two inches I like uh, well, this is just a hair more than two inches but somewhere around two inches and then use your bone folder to lock that in and then you're going to turn it around and now we're going to fold this side up and you'll see once we do that that the front of this is reading right side to us we don't want to go all the way up to the fold so we're going to go maybe about an inch down from where we folded it and that's where we're going to put our second fold Okay, so we wind up with an envelope that'll look like this. This is the flap and you open it up and the sides are going to be sewed or glued or however you want and then you know you have plenty of way to get in there to insert something inside. I pulled out a bunch of stamps that I have this one says the word inspire, which I thought could be a nice stamp for up there on the flap. And then similar to what I did before, I had these florals that crossed over from the bottom onto the flap. Now, you don't have to do that. You can lift the flap up and then just stamp only on the bottom. And... That's certainly a viable way to go. And I think I like, okay, I have three different kinds of flaps on these. So let me point this out. This one just comes straight down. There's no additional cutting or folding. It's just a very straight cut flap. This one, we have come down about half an inch and then angled it in. And I rather like that. And that makes, I think, a, a little more interesting flap. And then in this one, I came down, but instead of cutting the, uh, the, uh, this section off, I folded it up and then put a couple brads through there. You can see where they're being attached on the inside. And I really like that. Fact, I think maybe I'll uh, I'll do that for both of these because I have a ton of brads and I hardly ever use them and I just really like that idea so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'd like my flaps to be uh, pretty uniform so I'm going to come in um, 
what I do on this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to come in an inch, one inch in, and put up. Oh, I have no, no lead on that pencil. So I'm going to come in one inch and put a mark here. And then I'm going to come down half an inch to here. And then my fold is going to be right like that. Just put my I got a bit more of a fold, I think. I think maybe I want to come down not half an inch. Let's maybe go three eighths of an inch. So if I do it in there. I think that will Is that a full inch? That doesn't look like an inch. Maybe it is. Right, let's see. Yeah, it is. I don't know what's wrong with my eyesight today. But okay, so if I just come down three eighths of an inch and then pull that up. I'm only going to drop it down a quarter of an inch. I think I have a little larger A little larger flap. Okay. Yeah, I like that better. So come down a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going over one inch. Now, if if your envelope, obviously, if your paper is a different size, you'll want to make adjustments and not do exactly what I'm doing you have to you know feel your way along and make some adjustments that are going to be appropriate for you know proportionally and and according to the scale that you're working with so uh, here's what I've got. I like that. And we'll come over and measure off this one as well. I'm just putting my ruler right up where the where I would draw a line and then pressing the paper against the ruler you get a nice clean fold right where you want it to be. Okay, now uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to do some inking around the edges to grunge it up a bit. flat 
coming back. It's just a little too too uh, light for me, so I'm knocking it back a bit with the with the ink. And then I like to make sure I go along wherever I have folds and you know put a specific line in there and here I want to make sure I do the inside of this especially since I'm not um, decorating the inside with anything just come around and give it that little extra so when you open it you know if you opened it up you'd be able to see along there where you had added your ink And I'll do the same thing to this side.
probably noticed that I messed up on my last one and folded it going the wrong way. That's all I get for hurrying. So, here's what we're going to do. Now you can add whatever embellishment you choose to going by what you have in your stash. I'm going to stamp with this folded up. try to anyway uh, I don't know if that was such a good idea but since I did it on that side I need to be consistent do it over here. Ooh, okay, we're going to be really, really grungy. Okay, now I think we'll do some floral. It went very symmetrical. Not a very good job. This one's lower than that one and this one's missing half the design. So, what do I want to do? I think I moved that just a hair. Yeah, I did. Well, I got a shadow. Not on purpose. Bro, this one just doesn't seem to want to come together too well. <laughs> it's like 
you know. <laughs> the more I do, the worse it gets. All right, but I still like this stamp. I'm going to... I am not going to have companions after all. Because the other one just isn't... Just isn't coming out. And I want that over there. I think we'll go over here. Okay, I like that. Of course, this is the one that I messed up in my folding. So, now I want to sew down the side and I want to put some brads on. So, let's see if I can find my brads without having to hunt for an hour. Okay, there's one, two. And you'll need a little hole punch. So I think I'll put the brad about right in there. If you're selling a journal and you've got some of this, you might want to, you know, cover that over with a sticker or a piece of tape, maybe some washi tape or something. Just, you know, you don't want someone to get hurt snagging themselves on, um, you know, for my own purposes. I don't bother to do that, but. when I know somebody else is going to have it. It's just a wise precaution to take. If you can glue, glue something down there that's, you know, color appropriate and are, you know, even even if all you did was take a little circle thing, sort of like this, and glued that down over that. You see how easy it is to cover that over and just, you know, let's face it, it's not very attractive to look at, and a person could, you know, just kind of stab themselves a little bit if they hit it quite the wrong way because they didn't know that was on the inside. Having said that, let me just go ahead and and pop a couple of these down. Alright, now you're going to need a 
a way to put a hole, some spaced holes in the side of this to sew that up. And I recommend a small hole and uh, trying to think how I did this before. I think I kind of measured the moth and you want to try to get it nice and straight. So if you did a hole roughly every quarter of an inch doing. This particular contraption is just not very... I don't know if there's a way to see it from the top, but I have to just kind of look down and find my spot by looking at it on the side. Now, I probably got that in a little far, and that's about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Uh, I think probably were I to do it over, I would have done it a little closer to the edge, like maybe an eighth of an inch in. I don't know when I lost my filming. I'm back to being a novice today for some reason. So you can just tie and keep tying till you have a bigger knot back here than your hole is so it won't pull through. Or you can take them off to the side and tie a knot. I want to make sure I can get a knot tied without using up too much thread because I don't know how much I'm exactly I'm going to need to get down to the other end. So, okay. So now we have this going across here and it's tied here. And so now we're going to go down, down into the first hole and then we're going to come back up and go down again into hole two. Oop, I lost my thread. Oh my gosh, this has not been my day. I'm tired. I think that's what it is. I'm just tired. Okay, so we're just going to be looping over. And you can catch that end down like I've done, or simply snip it off. And so we're just going to keep looping.
Now if you cut a longer thread and you decided you wanted to go back up then you could when you got to the bottom just turn around and go back up and so you would wind up with your threads you know crossing and making sort of you know a different kind of design but I'm just showing you this the quick and dirty way so that you kind of know what to do and then when you get down here of course you want to tie it off at the bottom as well and this has wound up taking me longer than I anticipated so I probably will just go ahead and finish this up off camera and then come back and show you the finished result so I'm gonna just put this through underneath here and what I want to do is just you know kind of tie a knot here catching that other thread right there on the edge of the paper and tie that knot a couple of times to make sure it's nice and secure. Oop. Okay, so yeah, this would look a lot better if the holes were closer to the edge of the paper, and I think maybe I'm going to need to come back and do a line going up the other way just to kind of fill that in more. It looks, it just looks really sparse. If you're new to my channel, I hope you don't judge me <laughs> by my incompetence today. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm all thumbs. And I made my samples a long time ago and I've totally forgotten what I did, to be honest. And so I'm just having to wing it. And so now I'm going to go down and go back the other way. And come around and go down. And you see how this is giving us a much more involved edging so I think it looks better because I got the holes uh, just a bit too far away from the edge of the paper and Okay, that looks better, a little more substantial. And this time around, I'm going to just tie it off in back.
Okay. And there we go. So you can see now what that side would look like once the other side is sewed up to, you know, to match. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to let you go now and just try and get through this <laughs> as best I can. And I'll uh, see you on the other side and show you, show you the finished wreck. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, here I am back again. I have the other side sewed up. And I just wanted to show you the difference. You see, I, I like this. I think it's a lot cleaner and neater looking. And the only difference is the holes are much closer to the edge of the paper. Here I went a good quarter of an inch, maybe even more than that. And so don't do more than an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's a quarter of an inch. So half that distance will give you something really nice and clean looking like, like these that I did before. And so I goofed. And sorry about that. But I have a nice big envelope. It's actually a little bigger than what I have, what I made before. But I'm pretty sure it's the same paper. Anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, you can use brads or not, you can leave it straight, you can just cut a slant there for, you know, this type of, of look here, and, or you can fold it back and put a brad on. You could even take some acrylic accent uh, paint and, you know, just put a dab there, you know, to make it look like there's a bolt holding that down and lots of different things you can take and sew. You could sew down the sides with a sewing machine if you prefer and maybe do a zigzag. You can zigzag all over the edges of these if you like. There's you know a zillion different ways to to make it all come together and I've just shown you one way that I did and I hope I've inspired you to you know make some of these and have some fun and and see where it takes you and so thanks for being here and i appreciate you all of you very very much and love to have you comment ask questions